Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Charlotte, and I am the Education Director at the Museum of Craft and Design. Um, we are thrilled to be here with you today. Um, the San Francisco Public Library is a longtime um, heartfelt partner for the Museum of Craft and Design. Some of you may have seen us at some of the local branches um, over the years where you've been there doing various free workshops um, for participants of all ages. And we're getting back into the swing of things post pandemic. Um, we have a brand new, beautiful, colorful mobile make art vehicle that we will be bringing around to um, all of the all of the branches that we were at before and even some new ones. Um, and we'll be bringing our wonderful make art kits and hands on experiences. So we're just really excited that you've uh, joined us today for this virtual workshop. Um, this is in support of the pandemic past pastimes exhibition that you can see at the main library. Um, there's a lot of really cool things that people have taken up during our time at home. And the library has honored that uh, with their pand pandemic pastimes uh, exhibition. And um, one of those items on the list is, of course, weaving, textile arts, knitting, um, things of that nature, crochet, and ties in really well with our current exhibition. Uh, I hope that a lot of you have the make art kit that we created for this particular program. Um, if you did, then inside you will see uh, our little um, brochure for the exhibition. This is for Mode Brute. This is a um, exhibition partnership with Creativity Explored. Creativity Explored is a professional art studio that features the uh, artwork and the studio practice of a number of developmentally dis disabled uh, artists who work from within those walls. Um, the exhibition was planned for months, years in advance. And uh, the idea was that the design partners that worked on the uh, fashion line with the artists were going to be working with them within the Creativity Explored studio walls. Um, but with the pandemic, things changed and everything had to go virtual just like this. Um, so this is a really appropriate uh, way for us to also be participating in this activity. Um, the artists from Creativity Explored and the community design partners uh, that were selected to work with them um, had to do this very thing in order to get their fashion lines off the ground. Um, so that is to say Mode Brute is a fashion exhibition. Um, there and here are a number of different styles of work that you can see within the galleries. We're going to be, we're sort of inspired by this piece right up here. This is from the Creativity Explored studio line. And it's a wonderful jacket and a matching purse that is uh, woven together with just all manner of really interesting, really cool strings, yarns, shoelaces, pieces of leather. Um, and other te techniques that you can see throughout the exhibition include um, fabric painting, fabric drawing, writing, embroidery, lots of embroidery. Um, so it's really worthwhile to come down, check it out, see what the artists are up to. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it's really, really interesting. Um, I'm going to just throw in the chat here. I actually have some links for y'all, um, including a free pass to the museum. So use the code that I'm about to put in here um, into the, uh, the first link for booking your tickets, and you'll be able to get into the museum for free. We also, if you're not making it out of the out of the house or you're from far away. Um, we do have a 360 view exhibition that you can also explore uh, from your computer. So that is the Mode Brute exhibition link that I have down there. Um, check it out. See, follow some links, check out the 360 view exhibition. It's interactive. It's really, really cool. Um, finally, and we have our final link MCD at home. Um, if you're into what we're doing today, if you like hands-on projects, um, we have a whole archive of projects on our MCD at Home website, and these projects are all um, easily found materials. There's nothing too specialized, crazy, or anything like that. A lot of it can be found in your house. Um, a lot of it's recycled materials. Um, so browse, browse that selection of projects as well. Um, the projects are for all ages. Uh, there's entry points for everyone. So I really encourage you to check that out. Um, so without further ado, I think we should probably get into our wall weaving. Um, we, I, I'm going to actually 
have a side-by-side -side view um, of my hands so that you can see what I'm doing as we're going through all of the materials. I'm going to keep this view up as well so that we can um, also, here I am, um, so that we can also look at materials and things of that nature um, from the front view as well. So um, hopefully a lot of people have picked up their materials bags, uh, the make art kits. Um, if you source materials on your own, that's wonderful. Thank you for doing that as well. Um, this is a really kind of loosey goosey project in the sense that uh, you don't need to have everything exactly the same way that we do. So let's go through what we've gotten there. Um, first off, we have our cardboard. So this is going to be the foundation of our loom. Uh, along with it, we've got these two little cardboard pieces. Um, those also are a part of the loom making process. Next, a little bundle of string or twine. Uh, that's going to be for your, um, for your warp string on the loom. You've got a little pair of safety scissors that is going to be able to cut through all of your string and everything just fine, so don't worry about that. Um, there's a Museum of Craft and Design pencil. You're going to notice that when you hold this pencil and it gets warm, it does start to change color. Uh, it's not broken or defective, it, so don't be alarmed when it starts to turn white. It is heat activated. Um, here we have a glue stick. We have a ruler and a large embroidery needle, which is very useful. That's going to come in handy uh, further on down the road too. Um, there's definitely some materials you'll be able to reuse here. Here we have some strips of fabric. Um, these are found materials. Some of them have come from donated sources uh, such as Koyushi, which is a local San Francisco company that is working in sustainable fabrics, sustainable and organic fabrics. Um, so big, big thanks to them for that. Um, and then we've got a bunch of little yarns. You got, you got random yarns. Um, so I'm working with two colors today. And then we also have our big floofy yarns. So these, we just call these big yarns and um, these are big yarn scraps. Um, and we Is anybody else having the trouble that the presenter is frozen? Yes. Okay. I guess we'll wait. Okay. Yeah, I can't hear her either. Like she's gone. Yeah, yeah also yeah. No, no visual or audio. Yep. Hopefully she pops back up because I can still see her instructor view, but with her materials, nothing else. Luckily, yeah, she's not. I would like hear to you. Left instructor view larger. And she's doing something, so she's talking. Yeah, and we we can still see your materials, but we cannot hear you. You're you're on mute. Let me tell her. I've lost my main view. Um, yeah. so okay, we can hear you again. I can't. Can everyone else please mute so that your picture doesn't come up instead of hers?
Okay, everyone. Seems like we're having some technical difficulties. So just be patient and Charlotte will rejoin us in a minute. Thanks. All right, I am, I'm back and I am going to try and get our instructor view back. Um, many apologies, everyone. As soon as the power went out, it killed my Wi-Fi, um, which is to be expected. Um, can I please get somebody to put the meeting passcode uh, into the chat so I can just easily put that onto my phone for this, this overview? Excellent, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, there we go. The joys of technology, right? All right, let's try and get that instructor view pinned again. There we are. All right, sorry, everybody. I really apologize for that. Um, we're going to record this. I can also record a brand new, fully clean version um, that then we can we can send out to, to everybody so that we don't have anything broken in it. Um, all right, so as we continue, um, Let's get going. Uh, first things that you're going to need are your pencil, your large piece of cardboard, and your um, ruler. So what we want to do, depending on whatever size of um, cardboard you have, even if, uh, even if you don't have a kit or anything like that, the first thing that you want to do is find the midpoint of your of the short side of your piece of cardboard. So our pieces here are eight inches long. So our midpoint is going to be at the four inch mark. So I'm just going to create a mark right there. Now, moving out from there, we're going to create other hash marks at the half inch point. So I'm going at four and a half inches, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, 
and then seven. I'm not gonna go to seven and a half because I'd like to keep a little bit of a border on either side um, that will just allow for a little bit more space um, uh, to be able to, to, to work with my, my loom. So then all the way over on the other side, we'll go to three and a half. We've got three, two and a half, two inches, and then one and a half inches as well. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have to do one more. You need to, you always have to have an odd number. Um, so I need to go to my one inch mark as well. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So find your half point. There it is at four. And I'll start on the other side this time. So I don't confuse myself. One inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. There's my four. Can you put the camera over? Move your camera so we can see what you're doing. Do you have the instructor view pin? Oh uh, yeah, but we can't see your hands. My hands, that's all I can see. No, we don't have your instructor view. Uh -uh. Um, I've got it pinned. I can see her instructor view. Or move, move your no, cardboard so it's the center of your body. Then we can see what you're doing. I, I, I can see exactly what we're looking at here. Can you try your changing your view to? How do uh, we do that? No, All I see is speaker view and gallery. At the top. Yep. Just speaker. don't see what you're working on. Can you hold it up? No, so no, no, no. You, yeah. that's, you're on the wrong view. You don't want to see the one that says Marie Dineinger. You want to see the one that says instructor view. And it should be pinned. I don't understand why. Let's see, maybe I can spotlight it. Let's try that. Um, okay. It says, yeah, it wasn't pinned for me. I had to pin it myself. You did? Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I had to go look at the different icons and then find your specific overhead view. Okay. Um, I'm going to need to see if perhaps someone from the library is, can spotlight my instructor view i'm not able to do it myself unfortunately i pinned i pinned it i figured out how to pin it I you did i did yeah okay i pinned if it if you go to gallery view which is in the upper left then you can select it and then it will become your view um, i don't know how to do it i still cannot see your uh material but now it, i can it, see now i can see your material now okay and then if you go up, right, if you go up to, um, there should be three little dots in the corner and it will say pin, and then that will pin, that will make it so that it's big and it won't move for you. Um, I don't seem to have it either. I'm on speaker view and I have the one that says your name and I don't see the three dots. I have a Chromebook, does that work? I couldn't tell you, let's see. <laughs> Um, but I can watch your, your video later too. Are you able to, um, if, when I talk, if it's in gallery or I'm sorry, if it's in speaker view and I'm talking, mm -hmm. are you able to, um, see the instructor view with my hands? Uh, oh, I see one now. So I click into that. Yeah. I so see something. Click, I see something that says instructor view. Let me click. Yeah, oh, it's not doing anything. I'm pressing it, but it won't. No, no, no. Don't click on the on the screen. Just hover over in the corner on the right, the right yeah. top corner, and then yeah. it should it should say pin. Oh, uh, I just have exit full screen setting. Is that a setting? If you if you hover in the corner, the top right corner of the of the instructor view. Oh, okay. Let me see. There you go. Yeah, I am, but I don't see a pin thing. There's no three dots. Uh, I have my arrow and the instructor view and uh, no. The no. three dots are, are hidden. I mean, when you <laughs> move to the right hand side, then suddenly the three blue dots appear. That's right. Oh. They are hidden. Um, I don't seem to. Well, of course, I can't see hidden things, but. <laughs> So if you just bring your cursor up to your right-hand corner of the instructor view, or- I'm doing that. 
I'm doing that. You don't get a blue box with three dots in it. Oh, maybe I, maybe that's what this weird thing is. If I if it, that could, what do I do? Click that. Yeah, click on that. Hmm. Nah, I don't seem to have it. I don't know if Chromebook has it. I'll just I'll I'll listen what I can and then I'll watch your thing later too, because I don't want to hold up your class. Okay, <laughs> let's let's see to um, library if you're able to keep looking to see if you're able to spotlight me um, in the instructor view, and then that should hopefully that will that will make it show up for everyone um but this is classic zoom tomfoolery um <laughs> all right so i'm going to keep doing my my half uh points my half inch points all the way to my seven right here um next i'm going to take my scissors and you're going to just snip along each of the marks that you've made. Now, you're not going to use the, the nose of your scissors because it won't have enough pressure. So you want to go towards the back and just do a quick snip through each of your little lines. Okay, and then again on the other side. How deep a cut are we making? All the way through the cardboard. I mean, like a half an inch, an inch. You're only going on your little marks here, see? Um, so yeah, half an inch. Uh, as, at least half an inch, no okay. more than three quarters of an inch. Very good. Thank you. Um, okay. So now we've got those little um, parts that have been snipped. We're going to take our two pieces and our glue stick. And you want to adequately cover one side of one of the sticks with your purple glue and then you will line that up along the base of your snips across the piece of cardboard okay let's get that nice and nice and flat and tight and then we'll do the same thing on the other side And there we go. So these pieces are used to give a little bit of distance between your warp string and the base of your loom so that you have enough space to be able to weave um, between the loom and the strings. And let's get our cap back on our glue. And speaking of strings, we will take our twine, take off your little rubber band, and then carefully unravel it so that it is nice and long and so that it won't get too tangled as you're using it. So what I like to do is just make sure that I can get it fully stretched out. And then I'm gonna just drop one end on the floor of my, beside my table. And we have, we have extra string here. So don't worry if you need to cut it at some point or something and start over. But um, I'm going to now give myself about three inches or so. And then I'm going to tie a simple knot in the end. And I'm not going to tie like tie it too tight. I want it to be sort of loose. Um, and I might even do a second knot in the exact same place because this is going to be an anchor for the string as we put it into our loom. Okay, so there we go. Now to feed it into the loom, I'm going to turn my loom over, and this is actually my starting point on the right 
um, the upper right mark when when your when your loom is turned over. You're going to feed your string into that notch, into that little cut, like so. Okay, and then flip it over and your string will be coming up the front of the loom on the left hand side and you'll just pull the string down and push it through the cut directly below the one that you just fed it through at the top and make sure it's snug you don't want it to be too 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 tight um it's going to hold in there just fine so no need to like pull 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 just feed it in naturally and then you're going to flip your loom over again and from the back you will feed the string into the next loop from behind or the, the next notch from behind like so and then like you're flossing and then pull it up and push it in to the one directly across and you're just going to keep doing that until you're all the way loomed and this is what we call the warp string um, this is the string that we will be weaving through And once you start to get the feel for it, you're going to be able to just kind of, you don't necessarily need to flip it over every single time, but you are totally welcome to, welcome and able to as needed. And I know that this this part takes just a little bit of time. I'm just going to keep going and get us as far the way through this as we possibly can. Um, and again, I'm going to create a whole nother video that we'll be able to send out um, so that so that you can make sure that you're getting all of the information on how to finish the piece and um, all of that good stuff. So here I am at the last at the last notch in my loom. So I'm gonna push it through there. I'm gonna turn over and just like at the start, I'm gonna give myself a couple inches. I'm gonna snip. And then I've got a little bit of extra string left over that I can use for hanging later, um, hanging my piece. And I'm gonna do another little knot here. Not, don't necessarily need to do the double knot. Again, doesn't need to be super, super tight or anything. And now I've got a loom. I've loomed. Um, and we can begin weaving now. So our weaving materials. Also, if you have if you have scotch tape or something or like washi tape or something on hand and you feel so inclined, you can just like tape these little tails down so that they don't bug you. But um, it's absolutely not necessarily. I don't usually do that, but um, I happen to have a little bit of tape here next to me. Um, so what you want next is your embroidery needle. You want your, okay, okay, it looks like we spotlighted, great. Um, you also have your pieces of uh, fabric scrap, your yarn, and your big yarn. Um, and right now it's really up to you uh, how you want to start. I think what I'm going to start with though um, is our regular yarn, just so that we can get a clear idea of how weaving works. Um, and then we will we'll move on to the other uh, the other materials from there because there are slightly different techniques for getting those through your loom. Um, so with our small yarn, uh, I'm just gonna take that paper off and unravel a little bit. I don't like to cut too much yarn to where it's like unmanageable. So about two like two arms lengths like if you hold it out in front of your chest um, from from fingertip to fingertip that's about how much I like to start and honestly that's kind of my tip for any type of material that I'm that I'm using textile material that I'm using like embroidery thread um, when embroidering that's sort of the maximum of what is easy to work with um, so next you will thread one end of your yarn into your needle eye nice big needle eyes 
Um, so that shouldn't be too hard. And you're not going to feed it all the way through. You're just gonna leave a little bit of a tail. So three or four inches, enough so that you can maybe even grip it, grip the tail with your, with your pinky um, or your hand in this, in this case, um, so that it doesn't, so that the, the needle doesn't slide off. Now, weaving is very basic. The only thing that you need to keep, uh, keep in mind is that we are alternating the over, under, under, over technique. So uh, we will start, I'm gonna start on my very first warp string and I'm gonna start down at the bottom. We always start at the bottom of our loom. I'm gonna start over. It doesn't matter if you start over or under, but you'll see here my, my needle is over my first warp string. So I have to go under my next one and then over and then under and then over and under all the way down the line. Under, over, under, over. And now I pull through, I make sure to hold on to my little tail and I wanna go all the way to the end of my piece of yarn. So I just keep on pulling, keep, keep pulling. And I wanna leave a little tail also at Name of the game is leaving a tail. So I've also got a little bit that I'm leaving out the end of the loom over here, which we will deal with later. And then I take my, my needle and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. But whereas I started over at the beginning and I ended over at the end, I now wanna start under. So always look to see where your yarn ended up. Uh, if it's over, you gotta start under. So that's what I'm doing. Here's my needle underneath my warp string. And now I'm going over and under and over and under and over all the way down the loom. And it's really up to you kind of how you get it through there. You know, different fingers are comfortable with different things, um, but the needle certainly does help to get you through. I'm sorry, I had a phone call come in from the museum. Here, just a second, we have to change our view a little bit. There we go. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, all right, so we're through and I'm pulling. Now, as I'm pulling through to the other side, it's really important that I don't pull too much and start to pull this warp thread, right? So you want to make sure that warp thread is staying perfectly parallel with your loom edge and the other warp threads. Um, and now I've got this like sort of loose weave going on. So a great way to be able to work with that um, to fix it is take your ruler again and weave it through. It doesn't matter if it's over under uh, which way you start, but basically just get it over under over under woven through. And then you can use it as this like slide tool to bring down and give you a nice tighter weave. And then I just store it up there. So I've still got some more turns on my yarn, it looks like. So I'm back at the beginning. I ended up under, so I'm gonna start over. I'm over, under, over, under. Pulling through. And this is going to give us a nice little foundation before we start playing with some of the other materials. Looks like I've got about one more pass. So I'm gonna do that nice and quickly. And then we will play with some of the fabric scraps as well. Oh, nope, one more pass, I lied. All right, so I'm under here. I'm gonna start over. 
And you're going to be able to tell real quickly if you got confused and did it wrong. Um, because you will see you'll you'll see a bit too much of your warp string. Um, in fact, I'll show you what that looks like on my final pass over here. So I ended up over here. Let's say I I kind of I forgot I kind of can't see it clearly, and so I I I didn't I didn't realize that I'm that I need to start under and I start over again. So then I'm going to go under here, and then I go all the way back through. And when I pull my yarn, I notice. Wait, what? That looks weird. Why is there so much? Why is it so loose? And why is there so much of that warp thread showing up? Oh, that's why I didn't go over under. So I'm going to pull my 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 needle off and just pull it back through. Pull the yarn back through. And I'm going to go ahead and actually not even do that last layer. I'm just going to leave uh, this tail over here and figure it out later so that we can move on to another material. Um, so something that's really fabulous and fun about using fabric strips is that you can really play with different textures. So here, uh, for example, in mine, everybody has different has different combinations of strips. I've got like kind of a cool, this is a, a Swedish dot uh, print. It's a very classic print. Um, these are raised dots and that gives like a really fun kind of velvet texture. Um, I've also got some of this beautiful stamped Koyushi fabric. Um, all of this fabric has been hand torn. Um, so you end up with these great like frays on the sides, which is something that I personally like to really play with a lot, like just pull some of those threads out and get even more um, of, of a texture that's going on with these pieces of fabric. Um, you know, you could even, if you're so inclined, take a piece, we've got this good um, flannel and like maybe even create a little um snip at one of the ends of your strip and then pull it so that now you've got you've got two fabric strips and you can like incorporate those into the weaving um, at different points but i'm gonna play i think with this lovely checkerboard pattern and with with the fabric you don't really need to use your needle um, you can just use your fingers and that really gives you a good feel for what what weaving really is. Um, and so let's see, I'm over here. I ended over. So I'm going to weave this piece through and it looks like I'm going to be able to go twice. So I'm going to weave this through starting under and I just use my fingers to feed it under the first piece over the second piece. And then I like to to pick up, like just kind of pinch and pick up that third, that third uh, warp string and just go over the next one and pick up the next one and just kind of feed through in that way. Um, it's really quick and you can keep pulling all the way through. There's a lot of different things that you can do with the fabric once you've got it in there. Um, I like to play with that after I have already gotten my, um, after I've already gotten the length all the way through. But if you wanted to, you could start playing with what it looks like to like smush it down right now, which we'll just leave that like it is. And so then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go over and under in the opposite direction. And I've got my little tails at the end. And I do kind of like that smoosh. I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna play and just pinch and kind of kind of smoosh it down a little bit because it gives like a nice little like a little bubble pop that comes out. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we've got going on there. Um, now I'm going to, I would normally probably move on to doing some more of this green yarn, 
um, to get another like base or foundation going right here. But considering that we are running out of time, I'm going to move on to the big yarn um, and we'll see what that looks like going through and just how fun it is to have all these different textures. Um, and then I have just like a cooking show, I do have some pieces that I've already finished that I can pull out and I'll show you how to finish it um, just so that you know. Um, and again, once again, we'll get all of this fully compiled together in, in a way where we'll, we'll go all the way through a single piece um, and you'll be able to see that. So here I have ended over. I'm gonna do it again, going under. So I've got this big old fat chenille yarn and it is funky, it is fuzzy, and it is going to add a whole new dimension to my weaving. And all I gotta do is just get it through there. And since it's so floofy, I kind of wanna hold onto my strings a little bit as I'm pulling through, just so that they don't get too much stress on them. And then I've got my little tail there on the end. And look, those strings, they just absolutely disappear even, <laughs> even without having to, to smoosh or do the other, the other side. So I have to search for my string and I ended under. So I'm just gonna go back over. Other materials that you can use in a weaving of this nature um, include things like uh, wool, um, like wool roving is a really wonderful material that can give you a really cool fluffy texture. Um, similarly, you could use cotton batting like cotton or cotton stuffing that you would put inside of a pillow. Um, that's really fun. It can give you this really neat cloud effect. Um, I do recommend kind of playing with that a little bit. And uh, of course, other fabrics and um, plastic bags. You can cut up plastic bags into strips and weave with those. I have done weavings with VHS tapes, which is kind of cool and a fun way to be able to repurpose some of your favorite films that you don't necessarily watch on a VCR anymore. Um, and you know, I'm actually gonna kind of play with this a little bit because it has so much texture. I can kind of pull a little loop out and like let it be a little bit taller than other areas. And that gives it, it's sort of hard to see in the black there, but it's, that gives kind of a, another fun way to play with texture. I'm just gonna cut this little tail off here. And then I'm gonna move on, I think, to my cooking show. Uh, my cooking show weaving. So you get the idea. Basically, you're just using the materials that you have at your disposal or, um, you know, other things that you have found and you just make your way all the way up to, um, to this line here. So you want to get up to the, to the top of, or the bottom I should, of your, um, your little raised piece of cardboard. Um, and then I will show you what we do from there. So. Here is a piece that um, I created earlier. Um, you can see we've got all sorts of crazy, all of the same sort of similar materials, totally different colorway than what we were just working on. Um, one of the fun things that we've included in the Make Art Kit is you have these mysterious pieces of paper. Uh, these are a part of the Koyushi design process. So, um, you attached to your instruction sheet, um, you will have one of these and it's got a whole bunch of threads taped to it. Um, and these are a, just a sneak peek into the way that a company that's creating beautiful textiles like Koyushi does, um, will go through the process of deciding what's the best color or what's the, what's the best weight of, a, of a, a thread that we should use for this um, particular garment or, um, you know, a sheet set or towels. Uh, so we included those because we felt like it could be really fun to just see that, but also um, to use some of those threads in your final piece. So I cheated, I forgot my, 
my Koyushi sheet. So I have just some uh, some pieces of yarn that I've used here. Um, but you can pull those out from the tape. And there's a couple things that you can do to give even more texture, the name of the game, uh, texture to your artwork. Um, so I've just pulled a few pieces out here. And one thing that you can do is maybe find a visible warp thread and take a few pieces of your thread, of your string or thread, yarn, whatever it may be, feed it through there. And then you can do something as simple as just tying or knotting those on there to give it almost like a tassel effect, like this orange guy here. You can also make something that's like, do something a little, a little wider. Um, and maybe you go, this might not be long enough, but um, maybe you go between two of the warp threads and let's see what we can do. This is a little bit tougher, but if you, if you pull, your thread over and under a piece of the warp string like so and then do it on the also on the warp string next to it you can create a, a little a knot of sorts now i'll hold this up that will be from you feeding your yarn through those, just through the back of those, um, those work strings. So play with that. Um, there's, you know, you could like create a whole bunch of fringe down on the bottom by doing that. Um, and then I'm gonna show you also how to get your piece off of the, um, uh, the loom. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom. And in order to do this, you can save this loom for future use. So just be careful during this step and you will be able to, to do this again. Um, so you're basically just slipping the loops off of the bottom, like so. Now, you're going to have one that's not a loop. That's your, your little knotted piece over here. So just kind of flip it up and just do whatever you can to tie that loose end to the loop beside it. Just whatever you can make that manage. It's going to be totally fine. OK, and then up at the top, let's see. Oh, actually, what we like to do. Okay, so next, mur, mur, mur. actually, you know what? We're gonna do it the opposite way. So, up on the other end, we wanna do the same thing with tying your loose end to your loop beside it. So make sure, and with that, you actually want, let me show you what's happening at the bottom here. You actually want to pull it tight so that this loop at the bottom disappears. So you end up with actually a bunch more string up at the top and you've got that little, you've got a little knot on the side there. Now you're going to pull this one out and you're going to take this first loop that you still have and you're going to pull your second loop so that it gets tighter on the bottom there. And with both of these, now that that, that second one is out, you're going to take your loop and pull it down and just with both of the loop pieces, like just as one piece, tie it 
and a simple knot with the loop coming back out the end. So you still have your loop, but now it's holding your fabric on down tighter. And the same thing is going to happen over here. But and so you just keep going down the line. Like that, like so. And then pull your loop. Oops, let me show you so you can see. There it goes. Get it down as tight as you would like it. Pull your loop. Just keep doing it. So that then at the bottom, you're ending up with a nice, tight, finished weave that's not going to come undone. And then here's our last one. We're pulling. Oops. Okay, so in the interest of the exhibition, we actually didn't go over our tails here, but in the interest of the exhibition and the way that, that's, that all of the weavings are so crazy and out there, I've been leaving all of my edges. Um, you might choose to like, maybe most of your edges are on this side, and so you just, or your tails are on this side, so you choose to keep them. Um, and, and so maybe, maybe I'll just cut this guy off just for, just cause he's so heavy. There we go. And then I think I'll leave this one. Why not? I'm gonna cut this little guy. Make sure that the only things that you're cutting have already been tied off. Um, I'm gonna leave that loop. And then you are done with your, with your loom. You can use it again. You're just gonna have to put um, another warp string on it. You could use any color warp string. It doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be white. You could, you could use a yarn, you could use a colorful thread. It could be, just get creative with that. Um, and then you have your dowel. And I like to do a long hang with my dowels. Um, but again, this is something that you can just really play with. You take your loops and you feed those loops onto your dowel. And you can play with different ways to keep that in place. Um, we generally will do like a little uh, piece, like a little um, uh, a little dot of glue um, on either the ends, the end pieces, or uh, on the top of each one. You can also tie your loop. You could also like cut the loops, tie directly onto the dowel really whatever you feel is most attractive for the way that you want to um, display your piece. You know, you could, you could cut these and you could tie them way shorter down here. You could get rid of the loops altogether and just feed the dowel directly through the top of your weave as well. Um, it's really up to you. And then you have that leftover piece of string from creating your uh, warps, your uh, warp pieces on your warp strings. And I would use that just to tie onto the top of your uh, your dowel at the end. Um, again, we'll go over a way cleaner version of this that where we're not rushed um, in in our final video. Um, but this is sort of the the gist of it. And then you've got a really cool mode brute inspired wall hanging and the option to come down to the Museum of Craft and Design and check it all out. Um, we would love to see you. And this is actually a good time to let you know, we will be back to in-person programming um, in January. We'll be back in action with our famous and popular After Hours Make event. It's gonna be Mode Brut um, themed. We will have actually a bonus runway show of unseen looks from the Creativity Explored line. 
Uh, it's going to be a real party. We will have music, drinks, bar, uh, food, the whole nine yards, and you are invited. There will be limited tickets available, but they are at our regular price um, of free for MCD members and just $10 for um, those, those folks who are not members. Um, kids under 12 are always free and welcome, and we also um, have a senior discount and student discount of $8. So um, we would love, 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 love to see you there. Uh, let me try and get back to my main screen. And thank you, Charlotte. I just want to thank you for that wonderful program. And thank you, everyone who joined us today. Thanks for your patience when we had our little technical difficulties. Sorry about that. <laughs> And um, we will be sending out a fresh recording of this sometime next week, along with a class evaluation. Um, this was the first time we did a class like this. So please send us your feedback, any suggestions that we can improve for next time. And I just put a link in the chat to get a free pass to the Museum of Craft and Design so that you could go and see Mode Group. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your patience, everyone. Thank you for, to the library. Um, we love you. You're great. OK, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Bye.